It's going to be a familiar passage of Scripture because it's the story of the Good Samaritan. And I I want to talk today about scars that are caused by other people. These are those things that happen to us in life beyond our control. There are things that wounds and hurts that we walk through that are the responsibilities of others in our lives. And I want to read you starting at verse 30 and it says, Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion, and he went down to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper saying, Take care of him and whatever more you spend I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among robbers? And he said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. Let's pray again. Father, again we ask you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to touch our lives in such a way that it changes us forever. And in Jesus' name, amen. I want you to notice that this man in in the text, and uh, as the scripture was reading in Luke 10 and 30, it says that Jesus replied to the man, he was going from Jerusalem to Jericho, a very short period, uh, distance between the two cities. All he was doing was minding his own business. All he was doing was going about probably something that was very normal to the culture of the time. He was simply traveling from one city to another, and he had to go through a very rough area of town, of travel. Matter of fact, most people will attribute what David is describing as, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it is a timber area between Jerusalem and Jericho. They called it the shadow of death. Because on this traveling path, there was a place in that, in that wooded area where people could literally hide and the thieves could come down. And people's lives were taken. This was a very dangerous traveling path. And this man had, had, didn't do anything wrong. He didn't, he didn't uh, instigate anything. He was just going about doing his business of going from Jerusalem to Jericho. And the Bible says he fell among robbers or thieves. Here all of a sudden now, he runs right into the actions of others. He didn't cause it. He just was going about his day and all of a sudden now, he doesn't run into people. He runs into their actions. Those people in their actions decide that they're going to take everything that this man has worked hard for. They're going to take everything of value and they really don't care whether he lives through it or not. So I'm sure that he's traveling on some kind of transportation of the day, some animal. He's either riding it or leading it. He's carrying something of value. All of a sudden this band of of robbers and thieves fall upon him. and, And he looks up and all of a sudden he's surrounded. And all of a sudden surely he tries to fight and he's doing the best that he can. But they overwhelm him and not only overwhelm him and take his stuff. But they take all of his stuff and the Bible says that they left him half dead they beat him unmercifully it wasn't enough just to take his stuff they wanted to hurt him now these wounds and these marks that were left by these these opportune robbers and thieves were not caused by the actions of somebody else they were simply selfish decisions that these robbers were motivated by selfish gain and they had decided that they would do whatever it took to get what they want 
It's amazing to me in this story that the Bible says he fell among thieves. It was just kind of one of those moments where he just was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Because every person in this place can identify with the scars that other people cause. You know, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. You're either, you know, in a relationship that maybe you're loving at a different level than what they're loving and all of a sudden it blows up and you're hurt and you're wounded. All of a sudden you had commitments and friends that had let you down and all of a sudden you're carrying around the wounds of other people. And we know the story that this man is laying on the side of the road and I'm really not here to preach about the priest or the Levite. I don't know why they passed on the other side of the road. But every one of us can understand this moment. Can you imagine what this guy must have been thinking? Laying there. He's, he, he has no capabilities of rescuing himself. He don't have enough strength. He's going to die right there. All because of the actions of other people. Then we look in the story and we find out we can identify with this victim that I've, I've tried to describe. And this man ends up losing things that was his. And he got so wounded in the Bible that it describes him as being half dead. This person is left in critical condition. And he needs to be rescued and tended to by another person, moved with compassion. And the Bible says in verse 33 and 34, But a Samaritan wasn't even one of those people that was supposed to help. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And and when he saw him, he had compassion, and he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine. And he, there he set him uh, on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. I want you to know, folks, if you're here today and you come in wounded and you were carrying around the scars of, of, uh, that are caused by maybe other people in your life, maybe you've been wounded as a child, maybe you were wounded as an adult, maybe it was in a marriage, maybe it was in a relationship, maybe it was in a friendship, maybe it was a business deal, but Something happened in your life and you need somebody to bring some hope and bring some good news to you. And all of a sudden you found yourself, you don't even know why. Maybe you come for a TV and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit during praise and worship said, You know what, today's really set aside for you. It really isn't about the TV. It's about the wounds in your heart. And I'm here, the Holy Spirit is here. You've got people that love you that are sitting right next to you. And we're here to stop for a minute. It's not about getting to the end of service. It's about finding out where you are. And ministering to you in the needs that you have right here. See, the Levite and the priest, they had somewhere to go. And they really didn't worry about anybody else. It was a selfish motive that motivated them just to pass by a guy that could die. There's people in our congregation right now under the sound of my voice. If you don't hear from God today, you may not make it. And God knew enough about you today to stop and say there's a whole church that's going to stop right in the middle and say you matter. And it cost us something. Some people may say, you know what, Pastor, that TV, I, you know, I, I don't really get into all of that. And I, and I understand, and, and I understand your point of view. You know, Pastor, we shouldn't have to give somebody a TV to come to church. But you know what? Our love demonstrated to them the love of God. And maybe they're here for the first time hearing the gospel. And it was all motivated by a TV. But didn't it cost the Samaritan something? Do you think that wine is free? Do you think that oil was free? That stuff that he had? Do you think it, that he just walked up to the wine store and said, Hey, I'm here for wine. i got to go pour it on a guy. He's beat up out there. I'd just like you to give it to me for free. No, it cost him something. You know what, it not only cost him money, but it cost him his effort. Because you know what, if for him to really care for this man, he had to get off of the beast that he was riding and allow somebody else to have the comfort while he walked. That's why probably 60 people wearing elevation shirts yesterday went into a, a neighborhood for the second time and canvassed. You know how hot it was yesterday? It was in its 90s. But we were there demonstrating the love of God because we were willing to take our time and demonstrate the love. We were here setting aside time this morning for prayer from 8.30 till, till right now, praying for people that were, are sitting on pews everywhere in this building. We didn't just show up and say, let's sing a few songs and let's preach a message, have three points of prayer and a poem and go home. No, we've been praying for you because we knew you were here with wounds. We're willing to take our oil and our wine and pour it in your wound because that's symbolic of the power of God, the oil of the Holy Spirit. 
when Jesus held that cup up at the Last Supper and said, This is my blood. This is the new covenant. He held up a glass of wine. It's symbolic of the blood of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit to heal your wounds. There he is. Let me get down to the the real gist of this thing because this is where we really got to get to. Bad things sometimes happen to good people. And when that happens, it leaves some wounds and some scars. The good man helped heal the scars on the outside. But the ones on the inside were the tougher ones. You ever been? You ever had that thought go through your mind? Why does this happen to me? I'm trying to live right. I talked to somebody last night that said, Pastor, I don't know if church is real. I don't even know if God's real. I was trying to live for Him and all of this stuff blew up in my face. Anybody else ever had that thought? Why does good things happen? Why does bad things happen to good people? I'm trying to live for the Lord. I'm trying to do good stuff. This guy was just going from Jerusalem to Jericho. Bad stuff happened. Didn't say he was evil. Didn't say he was a sinner. Didn't say he was anybody. It just happened. Because bad things happen to good people. I'll never forget when Bill Wilson was telling me about a woman that was driving a bus and and she was brutalized on on top of a building as she was going to visit children for children's ministry. A man assaulted her and victimized her on on the roof of a building. And he had to go there and she was there in kind of a heap all broken up and emotional. And and, and can you imagine the trauma that she went through? And he had to go there and look up into heaven as the ambulance was taking her away and say, God, why her? She's doing your work. Why didn't you take care of her? It happened. Those thoughts happen to a lot of people. The reason that it happens is not God's fault. It's our fault. It's because we had a chance to have the perfect plan of God in a garden. And humanity, mankind, Adam and Eve chose to rebel. Sin entered into the world. We have free will. Evil come in through sin. And now people can do bad things to good people. Amen? But this guy needed some help. Check this out. What do you think? He, what do you think about the inward scars? You got robbed, beat up, beat half dead, and this guy. What kind of emotional scars? The, the outward scars are easy to heal. Just to think about this for a minute. The emotional wounds this person and some of us have suffered. Talk about anxiety, about dark places and people in shadows. You ever have seen somebody that's been victimized? Their head's on a swivel, man. They're looking around. They don't trust anybody. They're looking around, thinking about, I don't want to go into that dark place because I can't trust anybody. It didn't end when his wounds healed up. There were wounds inside of him that were forever going to be that way and trap this young man, or this man, I don't know if he was young or not, trap this guy in a position of pain unless. All of a sudden now, the anxiety, maybe the outward marks. Can you imagine getting your teeth kicked out? You know how many people think about their outward appearance? You know what it does to somebody's self-esteem if you don't have the money to go get your teeth fixed after somebody kicks them out? You don't want to see anybody. You don't want to smile. You don't want to do anything because you've been wounded. Not outside of the responsibility of what you could control, somebody just brutalized you and kicked this dude, and all of a sudden his teeth are gone. You don't think that that affects how you think you look? What if you were walking around with an outward scar? I've got one right here. That's why I grew a beard. There's people hiding because they're afraid. What do you think about this? Maybe he wanted to isolate himself and never trust people again. You know people, friends, maybe yourself that just gave up on life, gave up on people and said, I've been wounded, I've been hurt, I'm never doing that again. I'm just going to be to myself. I'm just going to be in my little piece of the world. I don't have any friends. I don't get out. I don't trust anybody. Matter of fact, I'm going around thinking, when's the rug going to get jerked out from under me? When's the, I, I look at everything as a glass half empty. I'm just waiting for you to drink the rest. It's real, folks. This is the hardest message in this series. Four, maybe he couldn't understand why God would let this thing happen. You don't think he thought about that? God, why me? See, the, the revelation that I received in studying for this... It's easy to identify with the victim, but you know you've been the robber too. You want to give it a test? Let's test it. In your adult life, how many times have you ever had to ask, has anybody in here ever had to ask somebody to forgive them of hurting them? Everybody. You've been the offender, 
You've had to ask somebody to forgive you. You've had to say, I'm sorry. You've had to go through and say, you know what? I, we just were on different pages. I mean, think about it, folks. All the way back. Think about your life. Sometimes we just brush stuff off, but it scars people sometimes. Maybe that girl you dated in the ninth grade that wasn't any big deal to you, it was a big deal to her. You broke her heart. I'm not proud of some of the things that I did. All of a sudden now, I know that I've been in relationships when it all ended that they cried. I've been in relationships when they ended it with me, I cried. And if something was to ever happen to Michelle, I would really cry. <laughs> but we, haven't we all been the one that is offended? And then haven't we been the one that has been the offender? We've been the offender and the offended. Where we've been wounded and hurt by other people. Maybe you were that person that was crying in the ninth grade. And you've never really kind of got over it. Maybe it was, it was that person that, that your family structure just wasn't all just right. And all of a sudden you found out that this happened and that happened. And, and dad never was around and all of this stuff. And you're walking around with wounds. God sent a message for you to know there's hope. Amen. Amen. Steps of recovering from scars that other people have caused. Step one, forgive. Pastor, I, you don't know what happened to me. I can't forgive that person. Listen to me closely. I did not say to justify what other people have done to you, nor forget what other people have done to you. I'm telling you to release it so you don't end up in a prison of unforgiveness because the Bible is stern about unforgiveness because you've been the one at times. Don't forget that, well, Pastor, I didn't rob nobody and I didn't beat anybody up. Have you hurt somebody? It's the same thing. Maybe it wasn't because you took out a billy club and beat somebody and took their stuff. Maybe it it was because you were harsh with words. Maybe it was because you were selfish in your motives and you just run over to somebody to get to a business deal and it hurt people along the way. Maybe you've had to fire somebody. Maybe all of this stuff that we call life and we just think that it's just part of being life. No, there's wounds that people have based upon our decisions. Didn't you have to ask them to forgive you? The Bible's very stern. It says if you don't forgive people, he can't forgive you. I know we don't preach that very much. Well, Pastor, I, don't, I, I hate this person. You don't know what they did. It's keeping you in a prison of bitterness and hard-heartedness that isn't doing anything but damaging you. And if you live that way, they win. Because if somebody can just mention their name and it make you so angry that you got to go home and sit in the living room and cry, you are not in control of your own life, nor is the power of the Holy Spirit. The damage that was done by a scar is the Lord in your life. Just going to preach it real today. Because we got to get down here to where people are wounded and know that there's hope for them. Because there's people that around that don't know if they're going to hold on and they don't realize why they can't get any peace and why they can't sleep at night and why they have nightmares and, and whatever else we want to call There's so many scientific names, uh, night terrors and all kinds of stuff and I'm not dismissing that stuff but it can be a lot of help to you if you just get real with God and say God I don't like this person, I'm never going to invite them to dinner but I want to be delivered from the pain of this thing and I'm going to let them go so I can get out of the, out of the prison of bitterness and hard heartedness your word says vengeance is yours. You take care of them. Number one, forgive. Step number two. This is my favorite. Keep on living. You didn't die. Well, pastor, you know, your story has become so routine to you that you tell it to everybody and most people don't even really want to hear it. But you are so rehearsed at how you were the one that was, got the short end of the stick and they took advantage of you and they left you and they did this and they did that and, and, and you, you've lost your happiness in the 70s. Get it back. You didn't die. You're wounded. You're scratched up. You're bruised. But you're still living, baby. Get up and do something with the marks. Amen. If you just roll over and live a miserable life, they win. The enemy wins. I'd rather be limping around, scarred and struggling, and on my way to a journey of an exciting adventure of life than to be in my living room protected with everything. Every, hey, folks, I got all kinds of stuff at my house. So I'm, I bet you in your living room with your, with your remote control and your friend is channel three. 
Get somebody to talk back to you. Take a chance. Trust somebody else. Go meet a friend. Go to the park. Go take two sandwiches. You can find a friend. (laughs) Keep on living. Get back in the game. Okay, you fell down. You're bruised up. Get back in the game. I'm fixing to preach a message about these two steps. Get back in the game and keep living. The Bible tells us in Psalms 147 and 3, He heals their broken hearts and bandages their wounds. Your broken hearted God's for you. Here's last but not least. Become a good Samaritan. Did you realize that at the end of that thing, God gave a, a, a command to a lawyer. He said, the one who helped him. And Jesus said, then go and do the same. Go be the good Samaritan. Herbert, do you mind standing up for a moment? Did you wear pants or shorts? You wore pants? Come on up here. Come here. I want you to, I want you to stand up here where everybody can see you, and I want you to pull your, short, your pants leg up and show people your scar. Yeah, I want everybody to be able to see I'm going to get a chair so you can stand there for just a second. Or sit there for a second. See that scar? Put it right there. See that? Covers almost the entirety of the lower part of his leg. Just sit there for a second. That was caused by Herbert playing football. Great athlete. Playing football and it, his leg was broken with such trauma that they thought they were going to have to amputate his leg. The success of it, the goal of success was him, if he kept his leg, being able to walk. Now I want you to understand some stuff. This young man, that, that, that scar right there is one of the little ones. Because he was walking around with some scars in here, and he gave me permission to tell some of them today. Do you realize that the people that loved him, and he loves the most, were so hurt and wounded themselves with their own scars that they were taking his pain medication can you imagine coming through the trauma of that surgery and the people you love taking your pain medicine and leaving you in a room hurting with no help that caused a scar in here do you realize that this young man when I baptized him in that pool I spoke a word of prophecy over him because he had, we, he had allowed me that day to tell some of his family story that said most of the men in his, uh, in his family have been to jail. And I was prophetically speaking over him and said, you will break the cycle. <laughs> See, this young man ran into a church named Elevation. And first of all, he ran into the bridge. Let me give credit where credit is due. He ran into the bridge first. And the bridge took him in and started ministering to him and, and, and being a part of his life and walking with him and mentoring him and parenting him. And then the bridge and elevation kind of took on and all of a sudden there was families within the church that started going the extra mile. The Ann Kearns, the David and Aaliyahs, many of you. He moved in with my son and his wife. They hadn't been married long, six months, a year. And all of a sudden now they have a roommate. That's not normal, brother. Just wanted you to know that's not normal. But because of their love, this scar was easy to heal. But because of the love of God, through the people of God, through the bridge, elevation, you, them that I've already named and some of them that I haven't. This was the easy one to heal, but the one in here you helped heal because it was caused by other people. But today, we will anoint this man with oil because he has a scholarship. He'll be the first male in his family to go to college. He'll leave Friday. See, God didn't cause those things to happen, but He was big enough to use the things that happened to demonstrate the real love of God through His people. And there He stands, going to Connecticut this week. 
not only healed of this, because he's got a football scholarship, by the way. He's back on the football field. But he will go as a godly man healed from the inside out. And I'd like the honor to pray with you. But before we pray with him, I want to pray with you. Amy, can you get ready to play me something? Some of you don't even know why you came today. And you thought it was just going to be another church service. But it's not. We understand you've been wounded. And sometimes you're wounded by those scars that have been caused in your life. Sometimes, like last week I mentioned, you're wounded by the decisions that you've made. But sometimes you're wounded by the actions of others. I've been here 11 years, 11 years in July, and I want to publicly say this. If I've ever offended you or hurt you or wounded you, and I have, over 11 years, you, if you live close enough to each other, you, you hurt people unintentionally. And I've caused a mark in your life. I want you to forgive me. And I want you to know that carrying the burdens and the challenges of sharing my life with four or 500 people Hasn't been the easiest thing either. And I want you to know that I have forgiven you. At times where there's been. I've been the offender. And I've been the offended. I've been the robber. And I've been the victim. And so have you. And if there's people walking around with the wounds of others. Step one. It's the hardest. Forgive. Release that person. Let, leave it in the hands of God. I'm not asking you to take them to dinner. I'm not asking you to forget. I'm just asking you be delivered of the pain. Step two. Decide today you're going to get back in the game. And you're going to keep on living. No matter what happened. Well, Pastor, I'm limping. Limp and live. Number three. Find a Herbert and be a good Samaritan. And take the focus off of your wounds and start looking at the wounds of others. Because you may have lived through what you've lived through to get to a young man like this and say, Hey, I remember being where you are. I remember what it felt like when it felt like the world turned against me. I remember what it was when I heard that door slam for the last time and I was all alone. I remember what it was when I had a friend just... Take advantage of the situation and hurt me. I know what it was like when I was offended. And do what the Bible says. And I'm going to read the last verse one more time. It said, The next day the Samaritan took out two silver coins and gave them to the man who worked at the inn. And he said, Take care of his hurt, this hurt man. And if you spend more money on him, I will pay it back to you when I come again. Then Jesus said, Which one of these three men? do you think was really a neighbor to the man who was hurt by the robbers? And the teacher of the law answered, the one who helped him. And Jesus said, then you go and do the same.